Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Namaste. Welcome back to this lecture series on evolutionary game theory. Uh, I am Dr. Gopal from Department of HSS IIT Dharwad in Karnataka, India. So we have been doing uh, this uh, evolutionary game theory series and in the last lecture you saw that we studied that uh, what are the differences between uh, what I called rational game theory and evolutionary game theory and how they are different from each other and what is the modus operandi. Uh, different modus operandi uh, exist in both of them. So basically we, we have been seeing that what we saw what ESS is then we have been trying to find out we, in fact we started to find out the ESS in a very famous game called Hawk and Dove game. So we will uh, proceed from there only. So I told you the game matrix like this if I draw it again. So this was our green matrix. So there were two stacked years. This is stacked year one, and here was stacked year two. Both of them have two options: either they can play hawk or dove. Similarly, year two also can play hawk. Or dove. Okay, and we saw in previous class that when one hawk interacts with another hawk, we have this payoff as b minus c divided by two. B minus c divided by two. How we arrived at this b minus c divided by two, we discussed in the previous lecture. If you have any doubt, you can always uh, see that in that lecture. And then in dove. If one hawk interacts with dove, then hawk will get v, while the dove will get zero. Similarly, for this thing, dove will get zero, and hawk will get v. And when two dove type stack deers are interacting, that then both of them get v y two comma v y two. So this was our game matrix. Regarding this evolutionary game, what I told you that we have a population. to start with we have a population of all hawks okay so we are starting with a population that have all hawks then two hawks were randomly drawn okay to play this game okay as it already told you in previous lecture that here the individuals don't matter these strategies that is hawk or dove they are hard wired to them as i already told you these strategies are hard wired or we can say that these member of this population all the stacks they are pre programmed pre programmed to play a particular strategy okay they cannot change this uh, on their wish only okay they are pre programmed they have to play the same strategy only so starting with the population of our hawks what we are uh, starting with then the two hawks are randomly chosen or drawn from this population to play this game okay when only hawks are there then what will happen the payoff or the expected fitness when two hawks are interacting with each other this is hawk this is hawk so we are in this uh, 
cell the first one okay so their fitness is what both of them get b minus c divided by 2 okay now what we will do we will see a mutation okay what is the mutation that at level of epsilon so when we say that mutation at a level of epsilon what does that mean it means that now in this population now in this population epsilon fraction epsilon fraction of doves enter okay so again pay attention we started with the population of all hawks okay then i am saying that in the population of all hawks few doves okay dove type deers at a level of epsilon that means epsilon fraction of doves they enter to this population so the new mix of population what is that after mutation the new mix of population so new mix pop of population is 1 minus epsilon fraction these are hawks and epsilon is a fraction of doves or dove type deers okay so now what will happen if we randomly draw draw two players to play this game what will happen so as I told you we are considering a pairwise contest or pairwise interaction so we have a population where 1 minus epsilon part or fraction is hawks epsilon fraction is dove and we are randomly matching or drawing two uh, deers from this population okay for this interaction so what may happen so suppose we say so one hawk is there suppose then this hawk may randomly be matched either with another hawk or with another dove other dove both of these probability uh, with both of these things can happen okay with certain probability what is the probability so it should be clear to you so if suppose we are considering with which uh, hawk can interact with whom so uh, and a hawk can interact with either other hawk or other dog this is the idea what is the probability that hawk will interact with another hawk that is the probability this 1 minus epsilon because 1 minus epsilon is the fraction of hawks in this population similarly one hawk will interact if we randomly pair it with somebody some other player it will be paired with another other dove the probability is epsilon okay so having done this what i am going to write now expected fitness expected fitness of hawk or to be more correct of hawk strategy as we know that individuals don't matter in uh, evolutionary game theory so i'm writing expected fitness level of a hawk so that is fitness level of hawk in this population at this mutation level as I already told you okay so we will write this expected fitness of a hawk so as i told you a hawk may interact with another hawk or a dove so suppose when this hawk interacts with another hawk so here we can see in the game matrix this hawk is interacting with another hawk then what is the payoff uh, what is the fitness b minus c divided by 2 so this will have so you can see from this uh, payoff uh, this matrix game matrix that when a hawk is interacting with another hawk the fitness level is b minus c divided by 2 so this will be the payoff 
or fitness level b minus c divided by 2 when a hawk type deer interacts with another hawk type deer okay so the, we are calculating the expected fitness so this multiplied by probability of one hawk interacting with another hawk which we found out here so 1 minus epsilon multiplied by this payoff that is coming from here pay attention plus as I told you one hawk may interact with other dove also so that is coming here one hawk is interacting with dove that is happening with probability epsilon so probability of one hawk interacting with dove multiplied by payoff b pay attention hawk is getting v when it is interacting with dove but this is happening with probability epsilon because we have the dove fraction in population as epsilon so this is the uh, expected fitness of hawk similarly we can write expected fitness of a dove okay so similarly dove can also interact with either a hawk or another dove so we are getting this expected fitness of dove strategy okay so i am writing f of dove so this is probability of dove interacting with hawk again 1 minus epsilon multiplied by so we can see when dove is interacting with hawk dove is getting 0 0 plus probability of dove interacting with a dove so the fraction is epsilon so the probability is epsilon epsilon multiplied by what is the payoff when dove interacts with a dove so we can see from this game matrix so when dove is interacting with dove each of them are getting b by 2 so epsilon multiplied by b by 2 so this is how we can write the expected fitness of a hawk and expected fitness of a dove so let me summarize once again that we started with the population of all hawks what we are doing we are trying to find out whether a population with all hawks is stable or evolutionary stable or not so for that what we did we assumed that there are doves mutated to this population at the level of epsilon so the new mix population mix is now after this mutation 1 minus epsilon is the fraction of hawks in this population and epsilon is the fraction of doves based on this we wrote this expected fitness of both hawk and dove through these equations okay we can call it equation number one right now and equation number two so equation number one tells expected fitness fitness of a hawk type deer and equation two is expected fitness of a dove type deer okay clearly i will again tell you that this one minus epsilon is the probability when one hawk meets another hawk here in equation number one epsilon is the probability that one hawk meets other dove type okay similarly here also this is the probability that a dove meets a hawk here a dove meets a dove okay and with the definition of stability or ess we saw in the previous lecture what should be the case that if this hawk that we started with the population of all hawks if hawk is the stable strategy for this population then the hawk strategy should outperform the mutant strategy that is the dove strategy okay when it will happen it will happen when fitness level of fitness of hawk is greater than fitness of dove so this is the criteria this means that hawk type deers are doing better compared to dove type deers or we can say hawk type de deers have better fitness or more fitness compared to dove type deers this is what we learnt in previous uh, lecture this is the definition of evolutionary stability okay so let's see if it is uh, it is there or not so our fh is from equation number one we can plug in multiplied by b minus c divided by 2 plus epsilon multiplied by v this is fh this should be greater than 1 minus epsilon multiplied by 0 plus epsilon multiplied by by 2 
okay so we can check clearly if we do it our result is epsilon should be greater than c minus b divided by c i hope there is no problem so you can clearly solve it okay so our result is when epsilon is greater than c minus b divided by c then hawk is stable strategy okay but imagine what happens as we assumed we assumed c to be greater than b this means c minus b upon c is positive okay what does it mean this means for hawk to be stable epsilon should be positive and more than this but how what a situation when epsilon is less than c minus b upon c it is still positive so what we learnt about epsilon in uh, previous lecture that it should be able the population the strategy where we start with should be able to overcome uh, a smallest pot, a small possible mutation okay sufficiently small mutation so if we make this epsilon less than c minus b divided by c then it is again sufficiently small mutation sufficiently small mutation because it is still positive okay if it is lying between zero and this it is still positive so for this case hawk is not a stable strategy okay which implies that hawk is not an ess okay or what we can say that a small mutation of dubs can override a population of all hawks okay so please pay attention what we discussed we said that a strategy when it is uh, used by a population then this population should be able to overcome a sufficiently small mutations or with some different strategy okay so here what is happening as long as this fraction epsilon is more than this value it is stable but it is not stable for epsilon lesser than this value so that means it is not possible for this population to sustain the mutations that are smaller than this so it does not follow our definition of ess or evolutionary stability so that is why this hawk is not a stable strategy here okay i hope it is clear okay let's see why it is happening so why this hawk strategy or the population comprising of total hawks or all hawks is not able to overcome or override a small mutation of dub type players this is very important so let's see what is happening so basically as i told you this epsilon fraction is very small so what is happening most of the time what is happening the probability of a hawk meeting a hawk is 1 minus epsilon which is greater than the probability of a hawk meeting a dove so if you can see from this equation number 1 most of the time in this population due to uh, epsilon being very small a hawk player is interacting with another hawk so that is giving him lot of injury because they are fighting okay so they are getting this you can see this minus c so the fraction of hawk is more so it is more likely that hawk player is interacting with another hawk so that is not a very good idea because they get injured during this fight on the other hand due to this small value of epsilon what is happening a dove is interacting mostly with not interacting mostly with another hawk yeah so we will see how it is happening how a population of all hawks is not a stable 
uh, with the mutation small mutation of doves. So, let us see it here with the help of equation number 1 and equation number 2. What is happening in equation number 1? As we saw epsilon is a very small quantity. So, 1 minus epsilon is bigger compared to epsilon. So, what is happening? The probability of one hawk interacting with another hawk is more. So, most of the time what is happening? A hawk is interacting with another hawk and in this process as you know as we discussed in the previous lecture also that hawk is always fighting. He is bolder. Okay. So, that is why they are suffering a loss due to this term minus c and we imagine and we assume that c is more compared to v. So, they are getting a negative fitness from here okay. and very rare of the times this hawk is meeting with another dove due to the small value of epsilon. So, this positive v that is not coming to them due to this low probability. So, that is why in this population mix most of the time a hawk is fighting against another hawk. So, they are getting a negative payoff, okay. but on the other hand what is happening these doves because they do not fight they are dovish. So, despite this higher probability of them interacting with hawkish deers they are getting 0 and other time they are getting positive b y 2. So, if you compare the both situations the hawk type player is getting negative payoff okay, and the dove type player getting positive payoff or 0 payoff here. So, that is why they are better off in this scenario. So, this is how in this population mix the dove population is overriding the hawks. Okay. So, that is why the hawk is not a, a stable evolutionary stable strategy in this population mix in this game of hawk and dove. Okay. So, we can clearly say that a population of a population of all hawks can be successfully invaded by a small mutation of doves. This simply means which implies that hawk is not evolu evolutionarily stable strategy. Okay. Reason I told you as the fraction of hawks is more, so a hawk ends up fighting against another hawk and that is why getting more you know cost costly uh, you know the injuries. So, that suffers more compared to a dove that is why it is not a stable strategy. Now, we will uh, we will see opposite thing we will start with a population of population of all doves. So, previously if you remember we started with population of all hawks to see whether this hawk is a evolutionarily stable strategy or not. Now, we will start with dove and we will see whether dove is evolutionarily stable or not. Okay. So, we start with all doves then we say that a small fraction in the same manner as we did a small fraction epsilon of hawks invades this population. Okay. So, if I again redraw the game matrix so that we can write the fitness labels. So, this is stack DR number 1, this is stack DR number 2, this is hawk, this is dove, hawk, dove, this was b minus c divided by 2, b minus c divided by 2, this was b comma 0, b comma b. I hope this 
this k matrix should be clear to you by now and this is b by 2 comma b by 2 when both dubs interact okay now so what is the new composition new population mix so new population mix is that now 1 minus epsilon is the fraction of fraction of dubs in this population remember we started with all dubs okay and epsilon is the fraction of hawks this is the mutation okay so we will write so what 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 is the methodology how it progresses so basically two players are randomly drawn randomly matched or drawn to play this game okay so suppose we write the fitness of a dove type what will be that so as i told you earlier also in case of when we started with the population of all hawks so now also if we draw one uh, randomly one dove so the player with which dove is being matched it can be either hawk or dove okay so it will be matched with either hawk or dove with respective probabilities so <coughs> if we are writing this expected payoff then what will be the probability that this dove mix, uh, meets another dove that is this 1 minus epsilon so i'm writing now as we have already done it 1 minus epsilon the probability of one dove meeting another dove multiplied by so when a dove meets another dove this is b by 2 b by 2 plus epsilon this is this is the probability of one dove meeting another hawk in the random matching okay multiplied by when dove meets another hawk dove gets zero epsilon multiplied by zero so this is the expected fitness expected fitness of a dove okay again let me tell you this 1 minus epsilon this is the probability of one dove meeting another dove similarly this epsilon is the probability of a dove meeting a hawk okay i hope it is clear similarly we can write the fitness expected fitness of a hawk so with probability 1 minus epsilon this hawk will meet a dove so when a hawk meets a dove the hawk uh, the hawk gets v 1 minus epsilon multiplied by v okay plus with probability epsilon this hawk meets another hawk and when hawk interacts with another hawk we have this fitness of v minus c divided by 2 epsilon multiplied by v minus c divided by 2 okay so this is expected fitness of a hawk so again pay attention we started with a population of all doves and then there was a small mutation at level of epsilon of hawks in this population okay so the new population mix is this 1 minus epsilon is fraction of doves epsilon is fraction of hawks with this population mix we wrote the expected fitness of a dove and expected fitness of a hawk so again what is the criteria for evolutionary stability that 
this original population where that is in this case is the population of doves that we started with they should override the mutant population that is hawks in this case. What is the mathematical definition for that? The expected fitness of dove should be more than expected fitness of hawks. Okay? So, let us see whether it is true or not. So, we will put the values. We can call this equation number 3 maybe, equation number 4. So, we can write 1 minus epsilon multiplied by by 2 plus 0. This should be greater than 1 minus epsilon v plus epsilon v minus c divided by 2. If we solve it, you get epsilon should be greater than v y c. So, clearly if epsilon is greater than v y c, then this dove population is stable. But as we reasoned in the earlier example also, this v y c is a positive number. So, how about epsilon less than v y c? Then clearly as per this condition we can see if epsilon is uh, less than v upon c, then this condition is not true. That is fitness of expected fitness of dove is not greater than expected fitness of hawk. Then dove is not evolutionarily stable. So, with this we can see that this is not true, this, this condition is not true for all level of this condition is not true for all small values of epsilon. That means this population of all doves is not evolutionarily stable, which means population with all doves is not evolution evolution is not stable in evolutionary sense okay fine what does it mean it means that if we start with a population with all doves then this population can successfully be invaded by a sufficiently small mutation of hawk types okay which implies that dove is not ESS not a evolutionarily stable strategy. So, we saw that neither hawk nor dove is evolutionarily stable strategy. So, what is the reason for this? Earlier we saw as the value of epsilon is quite less. So, in the earlier example what was happening? Hawk was most of the time interacting with another hawk. So, that was causing more harm to hawk and less harm to uh, doves in the previous case due to a small value of epsilon. What is in this case now? Okay. So, let us see here again the epsilon value is so small. So, what is happening? Yeah, so, we saw that dove is not an ESS in the earlier case the hawk was not also was also not an ESS. So, previously we saw the reason behind that. Now, again we see that why dove is not an ESS here. So, what is happening? Due to this small value of epsilon, the hawk type player, the hawk that generally interacts with a dove type player and we know that when a hawk interacts with dove, then there is no fight 
and the hog type gets all the resource B without fight. So this gives a lot of fitness uh, value to hog. So that is the reason that hog type player, though it is a small mutation, they can override the original population of all dubs. And this is the reason why dub is not an ESS. Okay, I hope it is clear. It is in line with our definition that what should be the case that if a strategy is ESS, then the population uh, where this ESS is there that should not be invaded, cannot be invaded by a small mutation with some other, other strategy that is hawk here. Okay, But here we saw that when epsilon is less than BYC, then this small fraction of hawk can successfully invade this population of all dubs here. That is why dub is not an ESS. Okay. So, what the result is now? The result is both a population population of all dubs and also a population with all hawks both are not stable okay as we saw previously that when we started with the population with all hawks then a small quantity of mutation of dubs they were able to invade this population similarly we saw for a population for all dubs there also a small mutation of hawk type that was able to invade this population. So that is why both hawk and dove are not evolutionally stable. So we can say that hawk and dove both are not ESS, evolutionary stable strategy. Okay. Then the question comes, if both hawk and dove are not evolutionary stable strategy or ESS, then what is ESS in this game? So we will look into what is ESS then in this game. Okay. So since we started with a goal to find out ESS in this hawk and dove uh, game, and we figured out that both hawk and dove are not ESS, then our job still remains that to find out the ESS in this game. But before uh, doing that, what we will do, we will take one more example just to practice. Okay? So we have this another example, something called the beetle game. Okay? So a story goes like this, there is a particular species of a beetle okay? and this each beetle's fitness, fitness level is determined largely by the extent to which it can find food and use this food and or the nutrients from this food effectively, how effectively they can use this food. Okay? And due to some mutation, there are two types of beetles. Okay? So there was some, uh, some, to start with there was some population of the beetles okay? and their fitness level is determined by how easily or how much food they, they can find out and how efficiently they use the nutrients from that food. Now what happens at this stage, in this population now there is some mutation, now there exist two types of beetles, one is small beetles, other one is large beetles. Okay? And clearly the metabolic requirements of large beetles are more okay, compared to small beetles because large beetles requires more food to survive. It is uh, commonsensical, we understand this. Okay. So our job is first to form a game of interaction between these beetles. Now at this mutation, whatever mutation level is there, uh, there are two types of beetles. So we will consider the interaction between them and then what we will do, we will try to find out the ESS of this game. Okay. So this is just to uh, you to understand this game, what we can do, we can come up with the game matrix. Okay? So now there are two types of beetles, so uh, what will happen? These beetles will compete with each other for the food okay? 
and in this whole you know evolutionary game theory at least uh, as of now we are considering a pairwise interaction okay so situation is uh, little uh, kind of similar to this previous game that we did the hawk and dove game so if two beetles of same size compete they get equal share okay now if there is a competition between the beetles of different size that is a uh, asymmetric competition then large beetle gets majority of the share of the food that they are fighting for okay because the large beetle wins the fight and fitness benefit this is also one uh, assumption that fitness benefit from a given quantity of food is lesser for large beetle why because it has expensive metabolism okay so this is just a story let's come to the game matrix uh, following this story we can come up with this game matrix where there is uh, pairwise interaction is there so if we go by this uh, evolutionary game theory so what is happening there is a population of population of beetles okay they play this game for food okay there is some mix the small beetles and large beetles okay so what we do from here two beetles are randomly matched okay to play this game that's what we uh, start with so there is a beetle bun randomly matched two battles beetle beetles beetle bun and beetle two okay so there are two beetles they are randomly matched to play this game beetle bun and beetle two okay so both of them has two strategies either a beetle can be small or beetle can be large beetle can be small a beetle can be large so clearly this goes in sync with uh, what we uh, discussed in the previous lecture that in evolutionary game theory it is not in hand of beetles or players to choose any action okay they are hardwired so here it is more kind of clear that beetle is given with this trait either beetle is small or beetle is large beetle is not doing anything beetle is not choosing anything okay only the population mix evolves that we already discussed okay so it becomes more clear here fine so this is the game matrix so just going by this story what we can see as it was the case that when beetles of small size interact or compete then they get same number uh, equal uh, amount of uh, food or benefit from food so basically, basically suppose we assume that 10 is the value of total food they are fight, they are fighting for so when two small beetles interact they divide this 10 in two parts that is 5 comma 5 they do not fight and say they get 5 comma 5 okay similarly when large beetles uh, compete for this food we can say that they get both of them get 3 and 3 the fitness value fitness value out of this food okay why this is less we had one assumption of expensive metabolism okay or we can consider some fight also whatever is the reason say suppose one large beetle fights another large beetle so some part goes into fight and something uh, is related to this expensive metabolism as per the story and finally we have these numbers so we are using this technique to find out ess we are not getting too much into story so this is the game matrix and what we will try to find out we will try to find out the ESS in this game similarly when a small beetle fights with large beetle the small one gets 1 large gets 8 similarly here large get, gets 8 small gets 1 so this is our game matrix and what we will do we will try to find out ESS okay 
so so we'll consider this detail game okay let me draw this game matrix here this is beetle 1 beetle 2 okay two strategies are either the beetle can be small or it can be large small large when a small small interact they get 5 comma 5 1 comma 8 here when a small interacts with large when large interacts with small this is 8 comma 1 and here it is when two large interact 3 comma 3 our job is to find out ESS what is the ESS in this game okay so as we have already done the previous example so we can quickly do this so what we will do we will start with all small beetles we can start with the population with all small beetles okay fine and this population is invaded by large beetles at a level of level of invasion we knew we know from e previous discussion okay level of epsilon so what is the population mix now population mix is 1 minus epsilon is the fraction of small the original population and epsilon is the fraction of large okay and two beetles are drawn two beetles are randomly matched for this game or competition so if we write fitness level of small beetle so as we have already done this in the previous case i am directly writing so i can write it as 1 minus epsilon multiplied by 5 okay plus epsilon multiplied by 1 this is the fitness level of a small type beetle how so as we have the fraction of small type beetle is 1 minus epsilon so basically the probability that a small beetle meets another small beetle is 1 minus epsilon okay so 1 minus epsilon multiplied by payoff gain when a small beetle meets a small beetle so this is the case when a small beetle meets, uh, meets a small beetle so 5 so 1 minus epsilon the probability that two small beetles meet or matched multiplied by 5 similarly plus this is the probability that a small beetle meets a large beetle mutation okay so this is the pr probability epsilon because epsilon is the fraction of large beetle multiplied by payoff so when a small beetle meets, meets large beetle small gets 1 multiplied by 1 so this is how we write the payoff of a small beetle if you simplify this this becomes 5 minus 4 epsilon okay similarly we can write fitness of large beetle again in a similar fashion we can write 1 minus epsilon multiplied by 8 plus epsilon multiplied by 3 so basically 1 minus epsilon is the probability that a large beetle meets small beetle 
so when large beetle meets small beetle large beetle gets 8 8 multiplied by this probability which again i am telling this is the probability that a large beetle meets a small beetle okay Similarly, this is the probability a large beetle meets another large beetle. Okay, multiplied by so you can see from game matrix when a large meet, beetle is meeting with another large beetle, both are the, of them getting three. So, epsilon the probability multiplied by 3. So, this is how we can write expected fitness of a large beetle in this interaction and if you simplify this, it turns out to be 8 minus 5 epsilon. Okay. So, we clearly know if small is ESS, then what should be the case? f s should be greater than f large ok. So, let us check if that that is the case or not 5 minus 4 epsilon should be greater than 8 minus 5 epsilon which implies that if we simplify this epsilon should be greater than 3. So, clearly we can see this is not the case because if we take uh, value of epsilon less than 3 then this is not this condition is not fulfilled. That means, as we did in the previous case of Hawk and Dove, small is not an ESS. What does it mean? A population of beetles with all small beetles can be successfully invaded by a sufficiently small mutation of large beetles ok. So, clearly small is not an ESS ok. How about the other case? Let us start with the other case. What is that? Let us start to start with a population of a population of all large beetles. Okay. So, again for just to understand we can again make the this game matrix, this is a small, this is large, small, large, it was 5 comma 5, it was 1 comma 8, 8 comma 1, just for your reference so that we can calculate. So, now, in this large beetles population, there is a mutation of small beetles at the level of epsilon. Okay. So, what is the new composition? In the new composition, 1 minus epsilon is the fraction of large beetles, epsilon is the fraction of small beetles. So, just like previous cases, we can I am uh, directly writing as we have we have already done fitness of 
a large beetle that is 1 minus epsilon the probability of a large beetle meeting another large beetle multiplied by 3 from here plus epsilon the probability of large beetle meeting a small beetle multiplied by 8 this turns out to be 5 epsilon plus 3. Similarly, we can write fitness level of a small beetle. This is 1 minus epsilon multiplied by 1 plus epsilon multiplied by 5. So, epsilon is the probability of a small interacting with another small and 1 minus epsilon is the probability of a small beetle interacting with the large beetle here. So, he gets 1. So, if we solve this, this is 4 epsilon plus 1. If we see this, then we can clearly see the F L is always greater than F S for all sufficiently small values of epsilon. Clearly, we can say that the large, the population of large beetles is resistant to a mutation from or of small beetles. Okay. Small beetles. This means that a population of all large beetles cannot successfully be invaded by a mutation of a small mutation by small beetles. So, clearly this is our definition of ESS. So, our learning we can say that the large is an ESS in case of this beetle game. So, we will stop here. So, we saw how to calculate ESS in this game. So, we will proceed in the next lecture. Thank you.